are going to put this in the freezer so it shrinks a little. Make because you saw how hard this was to kind of get off. Took a few hits. He's measuring all the shims, and he's actually writing the locations of where the shims were located and putting all the measurements in there so we have an idea where we need to go back to. And I actually have, I have all my gear jobs in here. As you can see, here's the front and here's the rear. I have everything labeled. I have both sides labeled. I have my backlash. I have my factory stuff. And that's how, if we run into any sort of, um, if we run into any sort of issue with any of our jobs, I can go back and look at what we did in that particular circumstance. Greasing up our races so we can go ahead and put them in our differential housing. They just came out of the freezer. Yeah, so they're a little difficult to grease. Uh, we just put the shim in and I just put the race in and we're about to tap it in. is going to do is it's going to work its way around the race hammering it into the case. It will sound different when it meets the case, like right there. Right there. Is in. This tool is a bronze drift from Snap-on. You can get them bronze or brass. You got to make sure when you're installing those sort of races, you're not using anything harder than the race because if you scratch it or nick it or chip it, it'll completely diminish the bearing life. We're at the point where Tracy's going to press the pinion bearing back onto the new pinion. Yesterday. That's a few, it's two. So yesterday and today's a few days. Tracy's just gonna press one carrier bearing on. Joey's washing his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy's reinstalling the ring gear onto the carrier with the supplied bolts. Which already have Loctite on them. As you can see, yeah. These do not have reverse threads like some carriers. Tracy's torquing these bolts down to a hundred foot and uh, our vice is our vice. <laughs> no pun intending. Marking all the ones that he has torqued so far. That and I put a line on them so you know if they loosen up. Yep. Which they won't. Unless you loosen them. Think we're there, bud? He torqued. This will come off separately. Make sure you don't do that. Yeah, don't do it's that. not going to hurt anything. It's just you just can lose do something. Yeah, just don't you don't do have to. These have little feet, which these feet then go in these notches. So you could potentially put these in there improperly. So you have to look when you put them in. You'll be able to see. And then you'll, you'll be able to hear it. It sounds like it's seated. And that's 
that seated all the way. And he's just gonna press that last bearing on. Just gonna press that bearing on. And this is where we're gonna stop today because, well, it's almost six o'clock, shop closed at five. We're gonna pick things back up tomorrow morning after my chiropractor appointment. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and get the, uh, the front pinion set in. It's easier to have somebody hold this end and then you tap the, uh, the back of it in. But I'm the only one at the shop at the moment because no one's gotten here yet and it's early. So let's see if I got the stuff to do this. So as you can see, there's a gap in here. What we're gonna do, I've already put the, the old nut on. You wanna use the old nut. I normally grind out the lock nut part just so it goes on easier. But I don't have any of those for this pinion. This makes things a little easier to hold. I can hear it around 14 to 26. So we're gonna be in this area of how much it takes to spin this. And I can tell you right now, it's a little over, which is an easy fix. We'll just loosen it and give it a little tap. And that was probably too much, but we'll go from there. As you can tell, now we're super loose. We'll try that. So, as you can see, we're just at 20. You can see it right there. We're at 20, which our goal is anywhere between 14 and 25. So, front pinion rotational force has been set. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the front carrier in. And then once we put the front carrier in, we can go ahead and tighten everything up, get the torque specs for the bearing caps, and then we're gonna run our paddle. What we are looking at is ring gear backlash. So if you can see that we're at, it's supposed to be anywhere between 3,000 and 6,000. So that's what, what we're about to measure with our fancy tool. Zero, you're on a little bit of an angle so it doesn't quite look like zero, but we have two and a half thousandths of movement. We are a little bit off on our backlash numbers but it's not that far off. We are a thou away from just being in spec. So that is close enough for us to do our pattern so we know if our pinion's in the right way. So if our pinion's not, we can go ahead and set the pinion. And while we're taking it out, then we can change the shims for the backlash. But if we don't have to take the pinion out right away, we can go ahead and leave it there and then just focus on backlash apply some pressure here and spin it with a drill and then go the other way pattern looks in the center there you can tell there you go backlash and check it again before you do a crush collar Look. there you go there's Keith's opinion everybody oh boy <laughs> next step taking it back out so we can change our shims on the side of the axle and then we're gonna check it again. This is good enough for a checking point. It's not like we are super crazy off or anything. So let's see how this goes.
move the rain gear further away from the pinion, which when you take 5,000, you have to add another, you have to add whatever you take away from here. We're at the top of six, and we're at zero. So, that is six thousandths of backlash. That's where we're supposed to be. This is our pattern. You see good contact in the middle. And now our next step, we're gonna get that out. And then once we get that out, we're gonna put our crush washer back in. Well, we're gonna put the new one in there. So then we can go ahead and start getting everything set. Crush washer is gonna go in, and the pinion seal is gonna go in too. Put the nut on, threaded it on there. We are at. 25 inch pounds of rotational force. Our uh, paperwork shows for 14 to 26. We like to shoot on the higher side because there's nothing wrong with going on the higher side of things. So we are at 25. Now we are going to put the carrier back in and we're gonna start rolling. We're, we're gonna try and get this put back together before Steve gets here. Let's get to it. I am going to put the diff cover on, RTV, all that. So while the RTV is drying, I can put the axle shafts back together. I can put the pad back together. I can put the rotors on and the calipers and the wheels. I'm gonna try and do all this before Steve shows up, just because it, you know, it'd be kind of funny. Not funny, but it's fun to see if I can do it that quickly. No, I was literally just talking about trying to get this done before you showed up. You missed all the good stuff. Listen, I brought hands oil and shop drinks. You can't go wrong with that. Hands oil and shop drinks. Hands oil and shop drinks. Don't you eat your life. I was literally just telling the camera I was trying to get this done before you showed up. I'm putting the cover on. You're done? Yeah, I just gotta put all the, the shafts in. Are you serious? Let me see the pattern. It's on video. I wanna see it. It's on video. I wanna see it. You got here early today. Did you? Yeah. You wanna get out early. I got here around 7.40. Oh, did you just look at that pattern? That's good, man. Not too deep. It's nice. Little, yeah. content. I didn't video much of the, uh, the crush washer part because I don't like doing that myself. And I didn't need eyes on me either. Yeah. But I talked about it. I also talked yeah. about doing the preload while I was doing the. How about the yeah the preload the and setup. Then, uh, cool. I just had uh, I just took a five thou out of this side and added it over there and. And how's that? Off. How's the backlash? Is That's uh, the hell was it? Six. Six. Which is it's supposed to be three to six. Oh, so cool. We're, the, we're at six. We're at six. Cool. Awesome. Guys. Originally. Um, it was originally a two and a half with the factory stuff in there. Really? Yeah, it was super low. Yeah. Nice. All right, guys. So Tracy got everything done by the time I got back here, which is awesome. Almost everything done. We just got to reassemble, put the axles back in, um, the hubs, the wheels, and all that good stuff. And then we're going to fill her back up with our awesome Amsoil from B Synthetics. So. We're just going to do that and then we're going to head to the rear and finish the rear and then we'll be done. There's something interesting that uh, Tracy was pointing out to me. I'll let him talk about it, what he's doing here. Um, anytime we take out axle shafts or we're doing a hub on any sort of any sort of axle with axle shafts, we always clean up the, uh, the hub surface 
right here with a wire wheel. And we also clean up the mating point, which is the inside of the knuckle. So we can put, so we can get a nice clean surface, so we can put any seeds on it. And so in the future, when they come out again, because you know axle seals go bad, people have to do the U joints in these. It's it's inevitable for hubs to come out. If we put any seeds in there, it'll be easier, and we won't have to fight it. We've had some where it takes a couple hours, or it takes two hits, just like Steve's, where they come out. So it just makes life easier. The only reason why it came out with two hits is it's got 11,000 miles on it. But can you imagine doing a Jeep that has like 80,000 miles on it? They've never been out? That or they've been in a lot of mud and yeah. been in the PA salt. It takes a while to get those out. Like most Jeeps in Pennsylvania or most Jeeps that go off road. That's it, yeah. Another little thing that I forgot to mention is for the wheel speed sensor, I like to put some anti-seize around it and a little bit in it. So when we go to put the wheel speed sensor back in it, it'll actually come out if we had to take it out again. One of the very big problems on the JKs is they'll get stuck and you either break it to get it off or you take the whole wire and everything with it. Chase is going to show you how easy it is. Oh, I'm doing it? Oh yeah, you're doing it because you I have bare hands and I've already got them dirty enough. I don't have gloves. Well, we have gloves. And I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I never, I hate wearing gloves. You already cut it? Yeah, it's ready to get on the rock and roll. All the work for me. Look at that. Easy pack, no mess, no spill. Yeah. All easy. <laughs> wow. See? Joey knows. Full. Front end's completed, guys. On to the rear. Well guys, that's gonna bring this video to an end. Next video, we're gonna finish the rear. The rear. <laughs> uh, give uh, Tracy some props and a thumbs up, man. He, that's, it's not easy doing an install video and filming it and narrating it at the same time. So give him some props. That's like the first time he's ever did it. And he did a majority of that before I even got to the shop. He did that like in, I think probably three, four hours. Knocked all that out. So give him some props. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're stopping by for the first time, make sure you smash tap to something that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on all the notifications, that little bell. Make sure you turn that thing on. Get notified about all of our new videos that go live. Make sure you check out bsynthetics.com. That's me. I'm an Amsoil dealer. When you purchase your Amsoil from me, it helps support the channel. Check out the jpshop.net, allbeastprojects.com. That's us. That's our merch. I'll stop talking. We love you guys. We'll see you on the next upload.